The sun is shining and the grass is growing. I found a Ferris zero turn mower that was abandoned for a newer model. It's got a water-cooled Kawasaki engine and it's got that easy ride suspension. Watch with me to see if I can get this mower to not only run, but drive and cut grass like it should. Well, here it is. The old Ferris IS2000 zero turn. It's got the, uh, the Kawasaki engine, a 26 horse liquid cooled. I presume this to be like a 2009, 2010 model, somewhere in there. I haven't ran the numbers yet. Hadn't found the numbers. Uh, it's been sitting a while, it's dirty. One owner, elderly owned. Um, it doesn't have a key. He didn't know where the key went. Didn't know what happened to it, so he's probably got it somewhere. He just doesn't know where it is. So let's see if we can get this thing started up. We don't need a key. May may have one actually in my pocket here. Let's see. Forward. No. That's not going to do it. Move and store. Let's try this. Padlock key. There we go. Oh, it's got power. Hear it? Will it start? No, not gonna move to the start position. Huh, but it turns it on and off. Okay, well, I can fix that. Let's go around here and find the solenoid. A little steal me, steal me can. Right there. A little bit of wiring and we'll hot wire this baby. Let's see. Put that there. And we'll clip this one. If we can see what we're doing. Uh-huh. That was loose. Let's put that there. Let's try that. And then put that there. And probably blow it up. Now let's go turn on the key. Let's see if this thing will start. All right, ignition engaged. Let's go ahead and choke it. I know it's been sitting. Uh-oh. That's the automatic return choke. Hmm. It's not good. All right, let's see what she does. Let's set the fuel zone. Fuel valve looks like it's on the right tank. Nothing. Ooh, not good. Actually, we may need the parking brake on. I believe that's it. Ah. Contact, nothing. Let's see if we're actually hooked up. Should be nice to see what we're doing. Hmm, that might be our problem. The old alligator clip's bent. Actually, the old alligator clip is trash just can't get anything good these days all right let's try that fire the hole oh yeah we're cooking with gas now baby all right here we go fire the hole
going to go ahead and warn you, the ether is not good for any engine. Use it sparingly and with caution. Especially small engines. That ought to be enough. Mmm. not getting any fuel and it didn't like that let's turn this valve around maybe that was our problem maybe it was on an empty tank She sat for so long the carburetor's plugged up or the fuel pump's bad. Fuel pump's right here on the side. It's a little vacuum pump. Easy and cheap to replace. We can pull that off and see what's what's going on with it, see if it's pumping. <coughs> or we could deal with this later. Because I'd like to get it in the backyard. Quite honestly, it's probably going to be okay right here. And I could run this thing and work on it later when it's daylight and I got more time. Uh, I just thought we might get it running real quick. Well, it's inevitable. We need to pull the fuel filter off, check for flow. That filter's old, old. Check for fuel flow from the tank, change the filter check out that vacuum fuel pump. That's the first three things we've got to do. This tank's full. The other tank, who knows, it could be old gas. But I think it'll be a good sound engine as long as we don't ether it anymore, we'll be fine, so. Went ahead and pulled the carburetor float bowl off to see what we were dealing with and why we weren't getting any fuel. Well, look at this, folks. This is ethanol gas residue at its finest. Just look what we're having to deal with in rebuilding this car. All right, I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna do my best. But looking up into the carburetor right here, I removed the bowl and I was gonna to attempt to make sure the needle in the seat, you know, were moving free, or the needle was moving freely in the seat. And check the float. And I couldn't tell if anything was moving. Well, I had to take my needle nose pliers to firmly grab the float right there at the needle so I wouldn't potentially break or bend anything because I couldn't get it to come out after I pulled the pin. Well, the needle is stuck up in the seat. I pulled the float off, it just popped right off the clip and the needle stuck up in the seat. I have not seen one this bad. So let's see if we can get that out. I was trying to get this thing to pop off and run enough to pull it to the backyard, but now you see what we're dealing with. Trying to do it without removing the carburetor, which I'm going to remove it and rebuild the whole thing, but I just want to get this thing moved so I don't have to get help to push it the whole way. So here we go, fun stuff. Well, I got it out, guys. I don't think that inlet needle valve is, is any good. I was able to get a hold of it just enough. Let's see if we can get in here and show you. Little focus. There you go. Wow. Ethanol gas, don't you love it? Well, just for giggles, since we have nothing to lose, I ripped off the uh, rubber off the uh, tip of the needle, the, the uh, where it actually seals off, since it was coming off anyway. I just pulled the rubber off the tip and put it all back together. 
because why not see what we can do because we got to order parts anyway and clean this carburetor. So if we can get it to run halfway decent, good enough to go to the backyard, we're going to do it. And uh, let's see if we can get it running with a crap needle and a gummed up carburetor. So let's see. Here it is, the moment of truth. We'll see if this thing will run. Whether it does or not, I don't care because we know what we've got to do to fix it. But we put it back together and, well, if it runs, that will just be a, a huge bonus. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to choke it, but I'm also going to use this little bit of carb clean to uh, help it out. So. I've got my remote Connected. Hydro pumps are locked out um, or they're bypassed so it can freewheel. So I'll have to get something to uh, re engage those. But.
that's much better. I think we'll be able to work on it now without getting super dirty. We'll go back and clean it again, but I think I've got the bulk of it. So, the mower looks really, really good. Even though the original owner didn't wash it, he was elderly, so he really wasn't able to do all of that kind of stuff. He just used it and had it serviced every year and used it again. So, it uh, cleaned up really, really well. And uh, hopefully we can chase down all the issues it's got, and two of which I know of. We've got a leak down here on the wheel motor, probably a hose or a loose fitting. And then we need to rebuild that carburetor right there. So I'm also gonna change the fuel line on the whole mower and uh, service the engine. I cleaned the radiator best I could just now with that pressure washer, but I'll take this cover off and we'll clean that. Other than that, maybe belts and blades. I saw one deck wheel that needs replacing. I need to get the covers for the spindles. Other than that, I think it's ready to go. I think this will be a good little zero turn, so. get this thing jacked up, um, get it up in the air so we can assess the, well, looks like we've got a massive hydraulic leak. Looks like the, the Valdez oil spill here. So we've got to see what's going on. Both wheel motors are leaking. I don't know whether it's a hose. It could be even where the original owner broke the lines loose so he could tow it, not knowing how to unlock the bumper. So I don't know what it is. Honestly, I don't feel like there's major catastrophic uh, failures. I think it's going to be something simple. I did back it in here, it seemed fine other than the leak. So we'll get it up, get that tire off, probably pull them both off, get it on jack stands. That way we can look at this thing a lot better and fix it a lot easier. <laughs>
get you in here and show you what I found when I took the wheel off. Aside from a little bit of dirt and dirt clods and sweet gum balls. Doesn't look too bad. Looks like our oil leak's coming from this hose right here, this front hose. Back hose could be leaking, but it also could be coming from this hose right here. I don't know if they've loosened it or what, but this hose is soaked right here on this cover. Everything on this wheel motor's dry. You can see the drips coming from there. The other side's coming from the hose on that wheel motor too. That tells me somebody tried to break these lines loose, most likely, to get this thing to tow. Now, up on the hydro pumps themselves, there's a there's a bleeder that you crack to make them free spin. But maybe they didn't know. Maybe they cracked the lines. Why would both be leaking right there at the same time? Yeah, it's coincidental. Could be a bad connection, a loose connection, or it could be a bad hose. So. seems tight all right so I've got some degreaser I've soaked down this area real well hoses up under the tank the deck, the back of the deck on both sides soaked it down sprayed a little on the floor we're gonna get all this mess cleaned up and I may end up uh, putting a little more degreaser on the floor once I get this sprayed off so let's get this cleaned up didn't really find anything I cut the sheathing on the hose on the other side had the factory bands around it. Didn't it see anything that, that uh, portrayed a bad hose? It could have a, an old bad crimp, uh, I'm not sure. Once we get the carburetor on it, we can, uh, we can run this machine. But let's go ahead and get it clean so when we get ready to run it, we'll be able to see uh, a lot easier where this leak might be coming from. So let's get this thing cleaned up and then we'll just wait for the carb and the new tire. Thanks for watching.